Hello and thank you for watching this next exercise. Now we're still looking at uh, hypothesis testing uh, on a single population variance. Now, this problem, uh, once again, I've stolen a problem from module nine where we were looking at tests on single population means. Now we're testing the variance of those populations. So this exercise, I'll treat it the same as I did in module nine. I'm gonna split this one into two videos because we actually have two uh, two things going on here. We'll test them both separately. So let's get into it. Here we have a lumber yard that produces batches of two by fours in lengths of eight and 12 feet or 96 uh, inches and 144 inches. Each batch contains 50 two by fours. Because the lumber is used primarily for framing walls and home construction, it's imperative that the lengths be accurate. If it is too short or too long, it will cause delays in construction as adjustments will have to be made. In an attempt to reduce the variation in cutting lengths, the lumber yard has taken steps to increase the precision of its saws. The lumber yard knows that the current standard deviations of eight foot lengths, let me just highlight these important bits of information, is 80.82 inches. And for 12 foot lengths, it's one. Let's just Let's look at just the eight foot lengths in this exercise. So I'm just gonna scribble this out. On the first day of each month, one batch of each length is used to test the accuracy of their cuts. The standard deviation, the sample standard deviation of the eight foot length was point, oops, what happened there? It was 0.62 inches. And the 12 foot lengths again, we'll just ignore this for now and we'll come back to it in another video. Using a level of significance of alpha 01, test to determine whether they have succeeded at reducing the standard deviation of their lumber. Okay, so what are we looking at here? This is again a test on variance. So I'll set this up, our null and alternative. This is a test on variance. We're just gonna look here at the eight foot lengths. So here, this is just gonna be the, on the eight foot length of lumber. And as I said, we'll do another video for the 12 foot length. So we have a historical, or the current standard deviation is 0.82. And we have taken some measures to try to reduce or try to increase the accuracy of their cuts or try to reduce the variance of their cuts. So what this means is that this must be a lower tail test. I want to see, have we succeeded at reducing the variance? Now, what I'm given here is a standard deviation of 0.82. I wanna formulate this as a test on variance. So I'm just gonna square 0.82. So if I have a standard deviation of 0 0.82, that means I have a variance of 0.672, 0 0.672. So that is my current variance. And I wanna see if we've succeeded at reducing our variance relative to the current level. So we're gonna perform this test at the alpha 0.01. Okay, so here we've done A, justify if our evidence supports the alternative, uh, sorry, the null hypotheses, then that implies that we have failed. We have not succeeded at reducing the variance. If the evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, then that means we've succeeded. And yes, we have uh, reduced the variance uh, of our cutting machines or of the lengths of our two by fours. Let's perform the test. So our chi-squared statistic is n minus one times that sample variance divided by the hypothesized value. n is 50 minus one, that sample standard deviation 0.62 squared divided by uh, our hypothesized value 0.82 squared. So let's see what we get here. Grab our calculator. So 49, 50 minus one times 0.62 squared divided by 0.82 squared equals 28.01, 28.01. Okay, so there we've got our test statistic. Now our next step, 
we need to, part C, use the p-value approach. So this is a lower tail test that we're going to be performing. So when we go to our, our, our distribution, we have a lot of mess here from a previous exercise, so let's clear that up. So our test statistic was 28.01. We have 50, 49 degrees of freedom. So here again, we have to approximate it. We don't have every variant of the chi-square distribution. So 49 degrees of freedom, the closest we'll have here is 50. So again, once we've isolated what variant of the chi-square distribution is relevant, we can ignore everything, whoops, a oh, weird thing. We can ignore everything except for this row and this row of information. So we have our test statistic of 28.01. That is somewhere in between here, somewhere between these two values here. So that gives me well, that gives me strange values, doesn't it? 0 0.995 and 0 0.99. So this is a lower tail test. So remember, when we're performing a lower tail test, the, the rejection region is going to be somewhere down in this lower region. Let's, let's get our critical value here, and that might actually help us out. If we find our critical value for a level of significance of 01, what this means is I want to find that chi-squared value that gives me a, a probability of 0.01 in that lower tail. Well, if we look at this distribution, this is giving us only those areas in the upper tail. So in order to have a pr an area of 0 0.01 in the lower tail, it means that this upper region here must be 0.99 for that lower region to be 0 0.01. So for that, let me come back and look at this. Here's our 0.99 in the upper tail. So that gives me that value of 29.707 is my critical value. And so anything below that that is our rejection space for a lower tail test. So if my test statistic was 28, 28.1, well, 28.1 definitely is below that lower tail critical value. So this is going to give us sufficient evidence to reject our null hypotheses. Now, if we use our p-value approach, if we consider that test statistic was right between there, our probabilities are 0.99 and 0.95. Well, those aren't the values that we want to that we want to report as our p-values. Our p-values, we want those lower tail probabilities. So this means that our p-value for this test is actually going to be between 0.005 and 0.01. So I'm looking at 1 minus this and 1 minus this. So that gives us those values in the lower tail. Again, this is a lower tail test. Our table is giving us upper tail probabilities, so we need to make adjustments for that. So there we've got our p-value is less than, uh, less than 0.01. P-value is less than 0.01 greater than 0 0.005. Our level of significance was 0 0.01. So there we have enough evidence we can reject that null hypothesis. And so we have evidence to show that, yes, we have achieved a reduction in the variance of our uh, cutting lengths of our 2x4s. And that's already been verified using our critical value approach. Again, we had a critical value was 29.7. That corresponded with that value of 0.99 in the upper tail, which meant 0 0.01 in the lower tail. And our test statistic was less than that critical value. And so based on that critical value approach, we get the same conclusion of rejecting that null hypothesis. Okay. Good. It's a little bit more tedious looking at the lower tail 
uh, tests because again sorry for flipping back and forth here because again this table is giving us those areas in the upper tail so we need to adjust for that and that uh, that comes up both in calculating the p-values for that test uh, as well as looking up our alpha in order to find the appropriate critical value okay good i hope that was helpful thanks again for watching Bye -bye.